Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about the four questions that new clients always ask. All right, so today I want to talk once again about working with clients. Now, I know some of you guys out there don't care anything about working with clients. You're not interested in it at all. And it could be a lot of hard work. It could be very challenging. It could be very frustrating sometimes. But, you know, it could be very rewarding too. And at the end of the day, the bills have to be paid. So for those of you who have enough revenue coming in from your apps that you're able to, to pay all the bills and everything like that, and you don't have to worry about working with clients, then that's fantastic. I mean, I'm, I've been there before. Actually, I think I'm there now, but I have the team and we're, you know, it's, it's never enough. I want more, 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 right? So for those of you who are thinking about working with clients or who do work with clients, I wanted to share with you some of the questions that I get asked a lot from uh, clients who call in or when we set up that first initial meeting when we're actually we're pitching the project or we're doing that first not the requirements gathering not doing the actual quote but just having that first initial phone call now when people or or face-to-face -face meeting depending on how we do it right so I've had I must have had about 50 or 60 of these now over the years you know and we have more you know as we're gaining a as we're growing in popularity we're getting more and more of these and there's there's four questions that always seem to come up from clients that it would be really good for you to have a set answer for if they come to you. So I'll tell you what my set answer is, but it's not necessarily the best answer, but just so, just so you know. And it's, di it's different when you talk about working with companies or working with individuals. Companies seem to have, I mean, they have different concerns. You know, they have, you know, you're dealing with somebody who maybe a, a CTO or somebody in a technology department who's just looking for a good partner to help them with, with their stuff or you dealing with an individual who would like to earn revenue and have a little bit of money coming in uh, and in the wildest dreams being the, the millionaire, the, you know, the new Snapchat or whatever, but you know, on more realistic terms, just having something that, that generates a bit of money. So that, so these are the questions that always come in and by far the biggest question that everybody has, whether they ask it immediately or not is how much is this going to cost? So this is, you know, everybody who calls up wonders how much this is going to cost. And sometimes I'll ask even before they tell me what the app is, they'll say, Hey, I need an app. How much is going to cost me? Right. And I have to go through and I have several questions all lined up. You know, is it an app or a game? Do you need it on uh, iPhone, Android, uh, Windows phone? Do you need it on all of them? Do you use iPhone and Android? You know, uh, uh, does it require a server? And that's, that's I'll, sometimes I'll say, does it require a server? Most of the time they don't know the answer to that. So I'll say, you know, does it communicate? Does it, like if it's a game, does it have a leaderboard? Uh, does it communicate with other users? Does it send push notifications? That kind of stuff. And, you know, does it interface with social media? You know, that kind of stuff. And then I asked to, to give me a, a general description of the, of the app or the app ID or whatever. And sometimes they, won't, they don't want to tell me that right away, which is the second question that seems to keep coming up. And this is, how do I know you won't steal my idea, right? Probably about 80% of the time that I talk with new clients, I do an NDA, right? And it's, 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 for an individual, the, the concern is that I'm going to take their idea and run with it and I've got loads of free time and I can just build it and put it out there. So one of the things I have to say is that, you know, I'm at, we're actually really busy and I've got loads of, of ideas I would like to work on myself, but we just don't have the time for. However, I'm happy to sign a non-disclosure agreement. I have this template, you know, just give me a bit, a few details and we'll send that over to you signed and that's, you know, that's the end of it. With companies, it's different. They still want you to sign the NDA and it's not so much because they're afraid you're going to steal their idea because this could be very specific to their company. So like, let's say it's like a warehouse application or something like that. You know, they're not worried that you're going to take it and build your own warehouse application, right? But they're more concerned that you're going to go on social media and say, Hey, you know, uh, let's say Sony, Sony contacted me because they want me to build their big app, right? And they haven't really approved, they're just calling around. They haven't really approved anything of it. So they, they want that to be kind of hush hush. I mean, in fact, I met with, once I met with a client that were like a big publisher and they were talking about how they, they uh, were talking to another developer before me and they were, they were just in the initial stages of talking about what they wanted to develop and the developer went and shared it on their blog saying, hey, such and such publisher is going to work with us. So, and that scared me so much that, 
that I have to assure uh, new clients that you know I don't really advertise my clients. We don't have a, a my clients page on the website. You know, you can leave a testimonial if you want, but you know, by and large, it's just you know, we're just trying to do. You know, it, it's not it's not my story. It's your story. You're the one building the app. I'm the one helping you build the app. So that's you know that's where we go with that. Uh, the third biggest question is. And this again, this goes to individuals who want to who want to make money from the apps. Is will this idea work? And this is one that again I can't answer. But I, I well, I'll answer it with the telling them about some of my apps. So you know, my biggest app, which you, I was asking all my friends and everything, do you think this will work? Oh, it's my family. Do you think this will work? You know, ear agent. You, you hear people's conversations. It works like a hearing aid. Right? And more. Most of the people told me it was a dumb idea. They would say, yeah, it doesn't really sound like something that would work, or it sounds creepy, or I don't think you should do it, right? But I did it anyway, and it's made, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds the, over the last few years, right? And I have other applications which I thought, oh, this is going to be huge, and they just went, right? Well, so far, they haven't picked up. So, so I'll tell these kind of stories, and I'll say, like, I, if I knew what would work and what wouldn't, then I would only do the things that worked and I wouldn't be doing client work at all. So that would be up to you. That's a risk that you have to take. It's a risk that every app developer or app owner has to take, right? So, and then the fourth question, and this, and this is mostly with companies, is you know, will we be able to take the code afterwards? Or are we gonna be tied to you as a developer going forward? You know, are you gonna have a percentage of it? You know, sometimes, like with individuals, the first question will be, you know, I don't, or they'll say, I don't have any money. Will we have a, you know, can we do a percentage 50 50, that kind of stuff? I've talked about that so many times in the past, right? And I just, you know, politely say no, but you will be a 100% owner of the application, right? But with companies, they want to know that if they work with me and they don't like me, or if I raise my rates or you know, difficult to work with, will they be able to take that code and go to someplace else? And it's surprising how many companies and, and individuals have told me that they, their last developers wouldn't let them go someplace else. They were tied to them to do any maintenance and fixes in the future. And for me, I've always just been, this is something I address even before it gets asked now, because it seems to be such a selling point, which is, yeah, no, dude, just take it, you know, we're like plumbers, right? We'll, we'll do the work and if you need to take it to somebody else, you should be able to take it to another developer. But our goal is that we do such a good job that you're not going to want to. But So anyway, those are the four questions. If you do work with clients, it you know, like I said, it, it can be very challenging, but it's also, you know, looking, you know, just showing that you know what you're doing, you know, and having, you know, ready answers to those questions would probably help out a lot. So anyway, I hope that helps a little bit. And for those of you guys out there who do do client work, and let me know if you have any other questions that keep coming up because those are the four ones that I could, you know, that I can think of that always, almost always come up in these conversations. But there, there may be some that I'm missing that or that I just never, haven't encountered yet. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow.